This is A's Cast Live, your comprehensive look at the Oakland Athletics. Rooker, it's a fly ball to deep center. Robert going back at the track. He will turn and watch it fly. And 29 other MLB clubs. Dolis Garcia sends on the other way. That sends Carroll back. He's at the line. The legend grows. Wild Acuna of the Oakland Athletics. Stone in a truly historic season. Julio with an absolute nuke out to left field. It's Glaber Day. And like a good Glaber, Torres is there. Join us as we take you inside the baseball universe. From humidors to stuff plus <laughs> to walk-off dingers, we have you covered. Spend your afternoon with us only on A's Cast Live. Here's Chris Townsend. Well, welcome to another edition of A's Cast Live from the field, the start of the 2024 season. Yes, behind me, you see the athletics starting to get ready. In moments, we are going to have the manager, Mark Kotze, is going to stop by. The general manager of the Oakland Athletics, David Force, is going to be here as we'll have a little bit of a state of the union. Who else we got going on, Cody? I'm so excited. I forgot. Our, our A's. Uh, our Ace Total Access pregame guest today, J.D. Davis, will be with us. J.D. Davis is going to be here. Uh, we've talked about J.D. and – well, here you go. I mean, if you're going to start the, the season – The star of the show is here. If you're going to start the season, you got to go with the biggest name. you got to go with the guy that's been in the the league a long, long time. Mark Kotze Show brought to you by nestbetting.com. Skip, we get away from all the – Garbage you probably had to talk about. Just talk about some baseball on your team. It wasn't bad, you know. I mean, there's always going to be the questions of, of uh, you know, the fans and the emotion that goes behind the fans, and uh, rightfully so. I mean, you know, there is uh, – there is. it's all hypothetical at this point, but totally. this could be our last season here in Oakland. And if uh, if I have the honor and privilege of being the manager for, for the last opening day, I feel very blessed. Expectations. There's – you know, the past couple of years we opened up like this, and we weren't really talking about expectations, and we weren't talking about winning. Things have changed. Well, they have. You know, we're still not we're still not complete, um, but we have we have more talent. Um, we have guys that have experience, which which makes a difference. Yeah. And uh, and we do have expectations for ourselves to go out and and uh, and win baseball games. You know, when I think about this year, one of the things that really excites me is to watch growth because we've seen it. And now when I start to look at Geloff and I start to look at Allen and I think J.J. Blade is going to have a big year and I can't wait to watch Lawrence Butler grow and on and on and Mason Miller in his new role. Just talk about the Shea Langoliers. He's on the cover of the, what is this, Lindy's Baseball Magazine. He's on the cover. Yeah. I, we, I predicted he could hit more than 25 home runs this year. Let's talk about the growth. I think this is a year of growth. Yeah, I agree. I think this team, you know, resembles a little bit of that 17 team. Um, you know, we've got to get off to a good start. We've got to build confidence, um, you know, which is important. But that 17 team, you know, it took them a little bit, right, towards the middle end of the year uh, when they really started to gain momentum. They started to believe in each other. You know, this group, this spring training has come together and they start to believe in each other. They start to understand what it means to to uh, to to work together. Right. And uh, and the main message for us is like we got to score runs, boys. Like we didn't score runs last year. This offense has to score runs. And uh, and, you know, we made a commitment spring training to doing things a little bit differently. Um, and uh, and I think they bought in and we saw some results, but it was spring training. So. Well, I mean, I just looking at the numbers. Yeah, when you're only averaging 3.6 runs per game, that, that that's tough. What? Why are you going to be different? Well, I mean, our approach now. I mean, we've got guys that that understand. You know, the professional at bat. If if you got to win the first three pitches, if you don't win the first three pitches and you're behind, then let's let's try to see three more pitches, right? So, um, you know, we really focused on that. Uh, these young hitters are going to grow. It takes time to grow. And, uh, you know, like we let's talk about Shea Langliers and making some adjustments and learning, learning that it's not just one swing. He's got to hit. Right. And there's there's a way to hit. It's not just taking a single swing three times and being OK with the punch out. And um, I think a lot of these guys have understand started to understand that now um, they're making adjustments and uh, and working on on a common goal. You know, when I, I, I think about you and your growth. Right. And, and you're somebody who has no problem looking in the mirror. What's different about you, you think, going into this season? 
Well, I, I obviously, you know, for me, there, there is patience, but patience to a point now. And I think, you know, with these young players, they understand that there's, you know, there's just, there's a more, there's going to be more of a demand on them to, to take the right at bat to, you know, the learning curve, you can only be so patient for so long. And, uh, and then it's time to kind of put your foot somewhere where maybe the sun doesn't shine on them. And, uh, you know, overall, you know, watching these guys through spring training, the amount of work we put them through, um, they haven't, they haven't stopped. They haven't backed down and, uh, it's fun. It's been fun to watch. You're going to start this year at the very top. You're going with veteran guys that you brought in. J.P. Sears gave you 32 starts. Boyle's got all world talent. Got to throw strikes. Talk to me about your starters and what excites you. Uh, I'm just excited. I am excited about the experience, and you can count J.P. in that. I mean, making 32 starts in a big, big league season big is deal. experience. Yeah. Um, you know, with with Alex Wood going tonight, um, you know he's got the most time on the staff. Uh, he's got the most experience on the staff, and uh, he's pitched in big games. So, you know, Ross Stripling sitting right behind him. Both these guys we, we targeted. Um, we knew that we needed to address the pitching, um, which was a major issue from for April and May of last season, as we all know. And uh, you know, to have Paul Blackburn, you know, in a, in, in a four-hole spot where he's just going to go compete and and kind of I, I i really really like where paul's at right now he he threw a really good game the other night against the giants uh his mindset's really good and uh i think we're gonna we're gonna get a great year out of paul as well and you look at your bullpen you've got power arms and the way i look at it obviously mason miller is not going to be a guy you're going to have close like three straight games in a row that's fine because danny jimenez has that experience talk about the arms and the experience and what you expect from your bullpen yeah i mean it's still young Mason be a first timer down there, and uh, you know Lucas Ersig had what a little over half a season with us last season. Um, both those guys are going to pitch in leverage roles um, with without maybe a ton of experience. But then you add, like you talked about, a Danny Jimenez who has closed games for us. Uh, you 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 bring in a guy like Austin Adams that's pitched in the big leagues for a while and has experience. Um, to go along with him. And then TJ McFarland, who we just picked up and we're going to put down there as a veteran. He was here in 20 uh, with the A's as a left-hander. And, and uh, you know, so we had some injuries. We sustained some injuries to the bullpen with uh, Trevor Gott and Scott Alexander, who we were going to lean on as veteran guys down there. And we've kind of been fortunate to uh, to bring two guys in that, that we feel confident in, in having that experience and pitching the back end as well. What gets you super excited about this season, or at least the start of it? I think we're in a better place than we were last year to start the season for sure. And so there's a higher level of confidence coming in here. And, uh, and these guys believe in each other. They, they, they started to play better baseball August, September of last season. Uh, I mean, if you look out there, it's, it's Noda, it's Geloff, it's Lang, it's uh, Butler was a part of that group. It's Brown, it's, um, you know, Allen. Um, so, so the core Rooker, um, all these guys were here in September. We had our best month. We, we, Came close to finishing 500, uh, ran out of steam. But overall, I think, uh, you know, if we can pick up where we left off in September, continue to play good fundamental baseball, um, I think we're going to pitch well enough to keep ourselves in games. And it had to feel good to tell some of these kids their lifelong dream is to make it to the big leagues. And I think about her nays, what a great story it was to hear him cry for a half hour after you told him. But I think about Lawrence Butler, a guy who was drafted by this organization, raised by this organization, was disappointed he didn't make it last year. Just what was it like to tell these young guys your dream has come true? It's, a, it's probably the best part of your job as a manager, really. Um, you know, the down, the, the flip side of that is telling guys they didn't make the roster, and, and we had to do that with, uh, you know, Carlos Perez, Zach Jackson, guys that, that have been here and been a part of this group last season, um, which which isn't a great conversation, and nor does it feel very good. But uh, to reward guys like you talked about, Daryl Hernandez, Mitch Spence, um, you know, Kyle McCann, uh, all first timers on, uh, you know, making their debuts at some point. Um, it, it's amazing. It's a great experience. Some my treasure and, 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 and obviously we'll, we'll have those memories for the rest of my life. Tough one. Andujar. boy, he had such a good spring. He played great winter ball, had a great spring, got hurt at the very end, 
has surgery. When, when do you think we'll see him? Because obviously he could be a big part of your offense. Yeah, it's it's a it's a knee surgery. Um, those are those are kind of tricky, um, depending on you know obviously the tissue and and the recovery process. It's it's just way too early to to kind of put a timeline on it. Um, I think we'd be fortunate if we if we got him back, um, you know, in in middle of May or end of May, really. All righty. All right. Thanks, Tony. You ready to go? Ready to go, bud. 162. Yes, sir. All right. All have right. fun. Thanks, man. Mark Kotze, the skipper of your Oakland Athletics, and it's brought to you by nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Love where you sleep. For all your mattress, your sheets, your bedding, your pillows, you name it, one of our sponsors take care of them. Go to nestbedding.com. He's different. By the way, turn me up, turn my headphones up a little, Cody. I got to tell you, he's different. You can tell. Oh, for sure. And we 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 saw that in spring training, and it's a, I, I want to address some of the, how, how I started that because I don't want to be insensitive when I talk about all the garbage. What what I mean by all the garbage is all these media people who will be here for one day, and they're all coming here, and they really don't care. It's chasing the ambulance is what it's really doing. And to me, it's all garbage. You know, certain people, like I'll give him credit, Casey Pratt. Casey Pratt's been somebody who's on this, who I I worked with for years. I did television with Casey. Um, Casey worked at NBC. Back then when Casey and I worked together there, it was Comcast Sportsnet. Someone like Casey, I understand. But a lot of these people, to me, it's you don't know, you haven't been here, you haven't been around it, and you, you're just trying to chase clicks in a lot of ways. And I think we chasing clicks, you're just trying to get people to watch whether you're doing a news report or whatever. It's not genuine. That's what I meant by garbage. Our fans, God, no, I've not, not it's it's just the stuff if you got to see what. I mean, I've had people come up and ask me questions today, and I look at you, I go, you're not going to be here. I'm in this thing for 162 games. I've been in this thing for years. You're here for a day. Hell, you probably won't even stay for the full game. That is what I meant by you just get tired. You just yeah. know what's going to happen, and it's frustrating because they show up, and they're just a bunch of nuisance, and then they go away, and we don't see them again. So it just it bothers me every year because we've been doing this now. It's not like this just happened. We've been dealing with this for years. What are we on, like year 25 or something like that? It's been an ever never-ending thing and you're right it's a good way to to put it with addressing that so um i mean we're, we're aware of what's going on i mean so but like we said before we're going to focus on the play on the field and uh it's opening day oh yeah we made it i'm gonna tell you right now that's what these guys care about they're excited i i've had a lot of quality conversations today i'll give you i'll give you a quality conversation i had today with ramon loriano Ramon and I ran into each other. I've known Ramon for a long time. And I told him, I said, you're always going to be a fan favorite. You'll always be loved here. Where You're always going to be linked to the really good teams and playoffs. And uh, he really appreciated it. And at some point, we're going to have him on the show. He still owes us from spring training last year. Yes. (laughs) But, I mean, Ramon Laureano was, I've always said it, man. If you you get in a fight, that's the guy you want. Yeah, we saw it here. One of the greatest moments you know at some point when there's not baseball played here at the coliseum they'll put the greatest moments this will not go down as one of the greatest moments but it should when ramon luriano charged the entire it was alex Cintron was yeah. their hitting coach yeah. and he was popping off and ramon luriano charged the entire astros dugout and wanted to take them all on well we're not supposed to be close yeah. to people he was yes. gone. he didn't carry one after we're, them all we're supposed to have masks and nothing. he's like Screw it. And he went after all. He was going to fight them all. Oh, I was at because we couldn't be here at the time. That is one of my favorite Coliseum moments of all time. And you want if you want to rub it in more at the Astros, they uh, they ended up losing to the Yankees today. Did they? Yeah. They were leading the Yankees. Yeah, apparently, Soto had a throw to end the game that saved the Yankees. Juan Soto made a defensive play. Enjoy it on day one. And give him the MVP today. Overreaction opening day. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, – Corbin Burns, by the way, did some really good stuff for the Orioles today as they crushed the Angels. I'll be having that in my hit later on. Yeah. I, I asked the question. Uh, you can have this trivia for all year. Mike Trout with the first home run on American soil this season. 
Mike Trout, I didn't realize since 20 – you're getting me sidetracked. Sorry. Mike Trout, though, since you got me sidetracked, Mike Trout – has played in only 49% of his games, possible games, since 2021. Is that not shocking? But since you went through it, Orioles smoked the Angels at home. It's a big day for them, obviously, new ownership and everything. Uh, they went 11-3. to The Big Red Machine. It's back. Nick it's Martini. Back. Nick Martini, two home runs. Former A Nick Martini. I couldn't believe it. Nick Martini, two dingers in that one. Friars take down the Giants. It's always weird because we've done it twice, so it's not that weird, but it's always weird when you look, oh, Padres beat the Giants. Padres are two and one. Wait, they're two and they played in Korea. Correct. They beat the Giants six to four. Dodgers, uh oh, Otani, distraction. Not so much. Dodgers win <laughs> seven to one. Last time I checked, Otani was two for two. I don't know. Wait, let's see. Will Otani be distracted with all the noise around gambling and his interpreter? Otani, two for three, not so much. Butts goes yard. Freddie Freeman goes yard. Glass now goes six innings. That's like a complete game for him. Uh, my Marlins against your Pirates tied 5-5 in the bottom of the 11th. Yeah. Come on, fish. Big, big comeback by the Bucks. They were down. They were down 5-2. And that is about it. Oh, Blue Jays take that. The Rays are in trouble. Rays lose game one. <laughs> Uh, Blue Jays come back. They win eight to two. <laughs> Twins four to four to one over the Royals, and the Tigers with an opening day one nothing sh shutout over the Chai Sox. Tariq Skubal versus Garrett Crochet, the battle of the lefties. Crochet first major league start, six innings for the. That's encouraging for the White Sox that's on opening fair. day. Uh, Brewers Mets postponed. Braves Phillies postponed, and that could be us tomorrow night uh, dealing with rain. The roster is out. Yes, very interesting. Mark Kotze talked about Zach Jackson, did not have a great spring, was a guy that you thought, hey, that's another power arm. But really, injuries helped take care of the roster problems that you had, right? Luis Medina happened early on. We addressed it here on A's Cast Live, where Luis Medina hurts his knee, is not able to go, so he'll start on the IL. He was out of options. By the way, J.D. Davis – Will be joining us. He's right over there by the cage. As soon as he's done with BP. That's interesting, right? Because he wasn't even on our radar. We had no idea. We thought he'd be a San Francisco Giant, but he is here. But just looking down the roster, to me, I like to always start the year with kind of a theme. And the theme for me is watch the growth. That's what the theme is going to be when I look at this roster. And I see – now you're going to see – some veteran guys in there. Obviously, you're going to see Seth Brown in there. You're going to see Brent Rooker. You're going to see J.D. Davis. You're going to see Wood tonight. Hopefully see Stripling if the rain stays away. Paul Blackburn's not a young baseball player anymore. There's veteran guys. Oh, you, for all of you, you got to have veterans people. You got your veteran guys. Yeah, I'll give you real quick. The average age on, on uh, the A's opening roster is 27.73 years, which is the A's youngest since 2010 when they were 27.16. Thank you to the great Mike Selleck for that stat. So they are young, but you're right. I, I, I The lineup has some of the older guys. Can't start all the young guys on opening day, but as the year goes on, we'll see them get younger, and the growth the growth will continue as you were talking about. And the growth is, is Geloff that good? It's one guy. Is Nick Allen... I had a little conversation with Nick Allen. Said Nick, and obviously I know Nick real well. If you watch this show, you know that. Nick Allen, it's time for you to take over the shortstop job. You got to produce offensively and play that great defense, and take over the everyday shortstop job. That that that's what needs to happen. Because if you don't, Hernandez is there, Jacob Wilson is there, Max Muncie 2.0 is there. There's guys coming, so. Now is the time for you to take over that job. I mean, you start looking around, it's 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 a year to watch him grow. Lawrence Butler. I believe Lawrence Butler can be a star type player. I think JJ Blade can be that type of player. It's their time to show that that they can be the everyday guys. And those are the guys we're we're, we're watching closely, especially the outfielders, Blade and Butler. We want to see SC get in there. I mean, not he's not. I don't think he's. Uh, I don't think he's starting tonight. He's but. not starting. now. The guy who led the American League in stolen bases and set the rookie record is not in the lineup today. We will talk to David Force, the general manager 
What exactly is the plan for Ruiz? Yeah. Six, 67 stolen bases. He broke Kenny Lofton's cleanup. I have the great Tom Hamilton is here. Someday we'll be a Ford C. Frick Award winner. He's over there talking to Ken right now. And Vince. One of the great play-by-play men in our game. Long time Big Ten football. He's done everything. He knows Greg Corn, who does PR for us. Greg Corn, right there. Greg Corn over there, and his Greg Corn has got the beautiful suit on today. Looks sharp, uh, but he also worked back when they were the Indians. So I, I asked about Guardians Indians, and if we are referring to the teams before they change, we are to refer, refer to them as, as the in, as, as the Indians. Indians. Okay, good to know. Okay, and Tom Hamilton said that's how their franchise wants to handle it. So if you went into the Hall of Fame as an Indian, we're not saying that you you are a guardian. You are never a guardian. If you played for the Cleveland Indians, so Ray Fossey was an Indian, and the Cleveland Guardians want us to reference their history as Indians history yeah, because it was done as Indians. They've only been to the World Series as Indians. They've never been as Guardians. That's how Cleveland, the franchise, the Guardians want to handle it. So it is okay now because I know, like in the past, one of our the, the great Robert Costa would been my in my ear if I'd meant it's not Indians. No, if stuff happened while they were Indians, we reference we reference it as Indians. I now was, they're the Guardians. We talk about Stephen Vogt and the guard. How I mean, I know it's been talked about a lot, but you can't make it up. The baseball gods, the fact that. Stephen Vogt, his history here, his history with this franchise, the fact that he gets the job and this is the first place that he's going to manage. Unbelievable. It's pretty awesome. And uh, would you put Greg Corn on your Mount Rushmore of great Indians? I mean, he has to be up there with Tom Hamilton. Great Bob Indi- Feller. Where, where, Ray where, Fossey. Bob Feller. <laughs> I mean, who else would be on the great? I mean – I think Jose Ramirez has a place on there. He's a pretty good player. Jose, as they yeah. like to call him. Uh, Corey Kluber is pretty good. CC Sabathia was pretty good. I'm thinking more, obviously, more current. Yeah, I mean, you got those. Tommy. Jim Tomey, Manny, Manny Ramirez, Robbie Alomar. You got that Kenny Lofton. Lofton was a good player. CC. Oh, I'm going corn over Sabathia. It's a good, that's probably a good call. Yeah. But I think if that's – I'm sorry, I just – a lot of things on my mind. Opening day, we talked about Greg Umtide. When I think of great Indians, he's definitely on there. Well, well one and our good friend Stephen Kwan. I don't know if he's on there yet. But are, so are we going to have Stephen Kwan on the we're, program? We're shooting to have him tomorrow if it doesn't rain, and if not, we'll do something with him over the weekend. It looks like so. We will talk to our good friend Stephen Kwan for the third straight year. Starting pitching comes back to starting pitching always. What are the A's going to get? Because 24 starting pitchers used, and don't tell me, I ah, had openers. Whoever starts the game starts the game. They're starting pitcher. Okay? Whoever starts at you, if you have 24 different human beings start a game, I don't care if they go an inning, three innings, five innings. If you have 20, you're sunk. You got no shot. You've got no shot. So what are you going to get? Because I'm looking at Wood's numbers. Wood has a lot to prove. Your opening day starter. Because last year for the Giants, he was better out of the pen, 2.68 ERA and 50 and a third, than he was as a starter, where he had a six ERA with a 47 and a third. There's, you know, if he would have gone out and been lights out, the Giants would have been starting him. Yeah. So this is this is a situation to where he's a, there a lot of these veterans, which we always like this scenario, because so many vet, veterans have flourished in this scenario where they come to Oakland and they got something to prove. They want to remake their career. They want to survive their career. I mean, the, some guys have been on their last legs. Yeah, I mean, a really good example of this, it was, what, eight years ago now, was Rich Hill. Rich Hill is 38, and he, I mean, he was still pitching in baseball last year. Hell, the, maybe the biggest one, Scott Casimir. Yeah, he's a big yeah. He was a Sugar Land Skeeter. He was an yeah. independent ball. Someone needed to give him an opportunity, and the A's did. So whether you're remaking your career, you're trying to keep a career, this has been a good place. And you think about Wood, and you think about Stripling, and you now think J.D. Davis, guys that have come here. It's like, okay, this is a shot. Brent Rooker last year getting the nod out of spring training. This is your shot. 
Like, if this doesn't work, I don't know where you go from here. If you're an arm, you're, you can have a job, but you can always have an invite to spring training. But if you still want to believe that you're a premium guy in Major League Baseball, this is the year. It's a prove it year. So watch the kids grow and watch some of these veterans. I mean, I can't wait to talk to J.D. Davis. I'd be pissed the way the Giants handled my situation. I have that kind of year. I win in arbitration. Now I have to take a pay cut and play for another team. I'm here to prove something. Because if J.D. Davis comes here, who knows what the future will hold. But it will be another big paycheck for him. Yeah. I mean, it's a one-year deal. Like you said, let's think it's two and a half. And then there, I think there's incentives. So it could go up. But I'm excited. I want to see him play third base. I, mean, I remember, obviously, Astro and a Met. But his best year, he had a good year with the Mets in 19. And then he was good last year for the Giants. So I want to see if he can keep building on that this year for the A's and maybe be a veteran leader for the young position players. And no way do I want to go another season without a complete game. It's been two years That's now. a joke. Right? Is it two years? Two years. Yeah. Two straight seasons. Didn't have a complete game. For God's sakes, last year, Sears and Shintaro Fujinami led our team in wins with five. That's a New York Met great, Shintaro Fujinami. That is awful. Yeah. That is awful. Need to start established. Starters got to go deeper. Less starters, starters going deeper. Offense has to be better. There's just there's things that just have to be better. And you got to think that are, are going to be better. And when we start talking about expectations, I'm going to throw my expectations out here. My expectations are 70 wins. I want to see a 20. I think 50 is just so horrifically bad. And the way they started the season – that there's no way it even comes close to that, and I think 70 wins are my expectations. That's a fair number. I mean, that's I mean, it's a 20 game improvement. Some people don't think that's fair. Yeah, I know. I I've been saying the whole time. I, I said 65. I know that's low, but I mean, it's still. I mean, you win 51, and you're already better than last year. But we want to see an actual steady growth of wins, and I think the team can do it. I'm not saying they're going to jump 32 and hit 82 wins and finish, or even 31 and get to 500. But if you can get to 65, 70. That's a great thing for building into the next year, and these guys will be in a year older in the in the bigs, and that's that's going to be great for this young team. So 70. 70. Before the show ends today, I did my, uh, what do we call it, um, crowdsourcing, or uh, what's the – I asked everyone that's that we wanted, our broadcasters, myself. Oh, I still need an answer. You, you have an answer? Oh, no, I gave you my Ks. I don't remember what it was. Then I go stripling? Maybe. I'll put it in there then. But – we have all of our guys, broadcasters. I'm going with the death ball. We even got Bill Moriarty, I Martin to... Gallegos. We'll give it. We'll we'll give them all out late before the show ends. I got I got my gyro spin. So I mean I think it's a solid pick. I I went with Joe Boyle, but okay. So I want to talk about some conversations. Okay, so I went up to JJ Blade. So we've now gotten to know these kids really well, and I told JJ Blade. This is your time to prove to yourself what everybody thought you could be. I mean, when you think about that, J.J. Blade, where he was picked, the expectations, this is the year to prove you're an everyday player in Major League Baseball and that you have that ability. And, of course, he agreed, said thank you, and we – had some pleasantries, but I think this is a big year for J.J. Bladé. And if he could be a guy that Mark Kotze can put in the lineup every single day, no matter who's throwing, righties, lefties, it could be that could be big. I think J.J. Bladé, when you start looking at Geloff and Bladé, you start looking, and Ryan Noda is already there. Ryan Noda proved he could play every day last year. So I don't even put Ryan Noda in that conversation, right? Ryan Noda is already that guy. Ryan Noda's an everyday first baseman. And he was the one guy last year when teams came calling at the trading deadline, teams wanted Ryan Noda. And he was, nope, he's off the block. No shot at getting him. Ryan Noda's an everyday guy. To me, if Ryan Noda shows power right out of the gate, continues to get on base and play, great first base, he could be an all-star. Yeah, so, I But J.J. Blade for me... We need to find out, are you really that guy? Can you really be that guy? This is the year for him to find out. He's, what, 26 years old? Yeah. I mean, number four pick out of Vandy. He had a great yeah. final year, of our junior year at Vandy, and that's what the Marlins are looking for. We're Now we're hoping to see with a full year here 
what he does. And I'm, I'm excited for it because I think he has all world potential. He really does. And he's a great outfield, defensive outfielder, good arm. So I want to see the bat come around, not going to say completely, but come around more and keep building and then become the guy that we all expected him to be when he came out of Andy. And Brent Rooker, do it again. Yeah. Do it again. And now do it throughout the entire year. If he shows just some consistency, because with power hitters, we understand they're going to strike out. Things are going to come. Things are going to go. You're going to be streaky. But he got so cold for so long. If he doesn't fall into that, you really could see 40 home runs. Yeah. 35-40. Yeah, I mean, I know obviously the last one hit on the last day of the year, but 30 home runs is a big deal for a guy that made the club on the last day. And then, yeah, 35-40 is a very realistic expectation, I think. I mean, I know that sounds kind of cruel to put that expectation out there. Of Why? But, I mean, shoot for the stars. Shoot for the stars. Try to get the 35-40. Mr. Geloff's walking by. He's ready to go. Everybody's ready to go. Got to love it. The Geloffs are big fans of uh Ace I heard. Cast I heard you, you told me the other day. Mr. Geloff just walked by. No, he said, hey, your son. I mean, I mean, it's also, do you watch Zach Geloff turn into a star player? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he led the team in war last year, I'm pretty sure, and he was only here for half the season. Uh, J.D. Davis is coming over. I mean, you're, you're looking at Geloff at a 137 OPS plus. It's the fourth highest for a rookie in Oakland A's franchise history, trailing only Mark McGuire, Mitchell Page, and Yoenis Cespedes. So that is a uh, pretty big deal. So this is the year that he becomes a star. We've been really looking forward to this ever since – the Athletics sign, the new third baseman. What's going on? How are you? Hey, I, I can't complain right now. Right? Opening day? Can't complain. This is an interesting – this has been a very interesting time for you. I, I'm really – I, I don't want to pick your brain because obviously things in professional sports can change really fast. But Oakland and the Oakland A's, for many, many players – have been a spot where things, p- players came here maybe in a bizarre, weird, maybe an unhappy situation, and it turned out to be the best years of their career. I think Frank Thomas. Yeah. Frank Thomas was a star, mm-hmm. star player. We knew he was going to be a Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. Had an absolute divorce with the Chicago White Sox. People were worried about whether he could play or not. Yep. He came here and became an MVP candidate, and he still says it was the most fun he ever had in his career. Oh, absolutely. How are you feeling about being here? Oh, I'm excited. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, I've been waiting. Uh, not many people know this, but this is my sixth year, and this is going to be my first defensive opening day start. I've gotten one start at DH over with New York, but other than that, just never got the start. So I did not know that. Having the opportunity over here, I am truly blessed. Just like what you said, things happen for a reason. Um and I think there's only going to be good coming out of this situation right now. Um, you know, going from San Fran to Oakland, uh, the business side of it, obviously it sucks. But, however, uh, Oakland was one of the first teams that reached out. Wood, Alex Wood, one of the first guys that reached out. <laughs> so they've been uh, itching to get me over here uh, since ever since those rumors started to uh, come about, swirling if, uh, if I was going to get traded, if I was going to put on waivers or any case may be. But – uh, the Oakland Athletics are the team that, you know, gave me the opportunity to play third base um, and just get at bats. And I truly am grateful for it. And just like what you said, coming in here, looking at these young guys, how hungry they are, um, how much they have learned from last year, just being around them for two weeks. It is a fun time to be in there. And you cannot not see them wanting to get better and to be sponges, to ask questions. Um, and that's the only way you can be. You have to be vulnerable. I mean, they, uh, forgive it, thir- 33 wins last year. Any any team can – 50. 50? 50, 50. 50. Oh, my, it, you know. It was bad. It was I, it was bad. I, I'm, I ain't Don't not, sugarcoat it. I'm it not, horrible. Yeah. I ain't going to sugarcoat it. But there's a lot of organizations, there's a lot of teams, a lot of group of guys that would have folded, not gotten better, and just said this is what it is. But, you know, looking at them over the last two weeks – Looking how hungry they are, it's impressive. And it only makes me want to get better and to come out here and perform even better for them. All right. I thought about this, if I were you, when all this went down and you're coming here. Where you are in your career, who you think you are, 
I love it when a player has a big chip on their shoulder. I love when it's sitting there and I'm here to prove. I, I, it's me I, almost against the world, and I'm here to prove. Yeah. How big a chip is on that shoulder right now for you? Oh man. Um, ever since I guess leaving New York, there's been there's been a chip. Um, uh, ever since there's been labels, uh, going around me that I couldn't play defense. Um, being put in positions that I'm not really never been in. I went up to the big leagues. They, I had Todd Frazier up there, Gold Glover, being put out in left field. Um, you know, as a young kid four months accumulated over two years, getting the opportunity to go out there and play. I made mistakes, uh, took accountability for it, um, put in the work, continue to try to get better, um, got the opportunity to get traded over to the Giants, got to play third base, got the opportunity to put in the reps to show people what I can do, um, and not only do show other people, but prove to myself once again. I had a bad hand injury, my left hand. I had to go through 2021 uh, going, you know, two and a half months, two months out on uh, on the IL. But to play through, you know, a torn ligament, uh, hitting and playing defense. Um, and those labels uh, came back pretty quick that, you know, I couldn't play defense, couldn't hit righties. Um, and I just went back to the lab. I went back to the lab, got better, uh, worked with Kai Correa over there when I got traded over to the Giants, worked with hitting coaches to get back to my normal self. I felt like I took a huge jump last year. Um, and I felt like, you know, I was close. I was close. I had a one, about, about a month, month and about 10 days where it was just a struggle, just like anybody. But however, I felt like I carried myself well enough, uh, to be an everyday starter. Um, and going with that, going into the off season, learning from what I've learned from last year, um, there's a huge chip. And, you know, people ask me, you know, what, what are you playing for? What, you know, what, what exactly are your goals for this season? And, you know, a lot of these young guys, they try to come up, um, play this survival mode. You know, um, they're worried about going up and down instead of uh, trying to be the best of themselves, trying to be an MVP, trying to be a silver slugger. You know, it sounds so far-fetched. You know, I'm a third baseman. You know, I got Bregman over there. I got Jose Ramirez over there. Damn good ball players. But, however, you know, there's got to be goals. There's got to be goals and there's got to be something where you're striving to. And um, what I get out of it every single day is, you know, what would a silver slugger do today? What would an MVP do today? What would a gold glove do today? And so many people just do their regular routine. And I try to do that extra 10% every single day. And it ain't going to be too much. I'm not saying I need to run out here and do jump ropes for 20 minutes at a time and do some Rocky Balboa stuff. You know what I mean? But at the same time. You're going to be out here running without your shirt on? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> But there's intention into yeah. it, and there's intention to play like a champion. Exactly. Play like a damn champion. Play exactly. like a winner. Exactly. I mean, you know what I dig about it too is the fact that, hey, you're playing there. This isn't, you know, no offense to the Giants, no offense to the Mets or who anybody else, but this is not like you're going to be showing up going, where am I playing today? You're playing right there mm -hmm. every day. You're playing third. It's yep. your job. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what you got to take pride in. You got to take pride in yourself. Uh, just go out about it and have go with the opportunity, but have intent with every single drill that you do. Even if it's with Eric Martins out here, you know, just doing the hand stuff, doing drills or doing ladders over here, going inside and, you know, crossing those T's, dotting those I's. If you're hitting off a T, keeping that head down, keeping that, you know, back knee to the ground. So at least you're into your legs, you're balanced, making sure that you're able to do those little things. There's so many times where as a young guy, you come up here and you've, felt like you figured it out you know you go to triple a you 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 have monster year you get up to the big leagues and you know you're like man what's going on how do i survive in this and it, to be honest with you it's working on those little little things one a great guy that came over here from the from the oakland athletics matt olson that man sticks his nose in on every single pitch keeps his head down and look at the good things that are happening in this swing i know he's done tremendous things over here he was an all-star he's a gold glover but it all started over here. And some of these cats over here, Bushy, uh, Eric Martins, they know the game and they know how to teach it. And that the player development over here is by far some of the best things I've ever seen. And I can't wait to have a year with them. I know you got to get out of here, but I got to ask you, you've been with a few organizations now. So you understand when you see a direction going in the right way, going in the wrong way, you see the player development, you see the young guys. I've said, okay, my expectations, I got to be realistic. You won 50 games last year. I, I, I believe this team could win 70. Mm -hmm. And that's a 20-game improvement. Yeah. And a lot of people think that's crazy. 
what you have seen with these young players since you've come over, what what impresses you and what's your expectations of this team? Well, one thing I said earlier is the willingness to be vulnerable, to ask questions, to get better, to the work ethic. These guys are in the work. These guys are in the weight room before I am, and I pre- take pretty good pride in it. If we have a th- if we have a three fifty stretch, I'm in I'm in the weight room around 1.30, one, somewhere around there, around two hours before. So, and these some of those guys are in there, like about maybe a dozen of them getting after it. Um, another thing, the way they prepare too. I mean, it's not just in the weight room too. It's mentally too. It's mentally again, even the first point, asking questions divulging into the information on what weaknesses or how the pitcher is going to attack them specifically and what they need to do to stick to their strengths. And that's, that's the name of the game. I mean, that's, if you can come up with an approach and come up with the right preparation, you're going to feel good on and off the field and you're going to make your adjustments even quicker because you're not worried about the result. You're more using that result as information to gain yourself on what to do next time. And there's a lot of attitude around here. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of the, a lot of these young guys. They got added. They grew up in this organization. They're tired of the noise. They want to come out. They want to win. They mm-hmm. want to shut a lot of people up. Yeah, and I think that's a, you know another thing is they got socked in the mouth so many times last year. And you know what? You know when you get hit so many times, you ain't, ain't going to be afraid to get hit anymore. So they're keeping their nose in there. They're fighting, and they're dogs, man. They're from from day one. I came over here. You know, they were chirping at each other. They were playing hard nose, even on the uh, inner squads. When I got over there in extra at bats against, you know, triple A and double A. I mean, it's a culture over there, and it's pretty cool what they're building. I'll tell you what, you got me fired up. Yep. You got me fired up. I, I've been really looking forward to having you on ever since. And we saved you for opening day. I said, <laughs> I, want, I, I want to know how he feels because <laughs> – my expectations for you, I want to see over 20 home runs. I want to I see over too. 70 RBIs, and I want to see – because Eric Martin's had a conversation, and he thinks you can play every day and you can be a good third baseman. I want to see you become the guy you've always thought you could, could be, mm-hmm. and you you become another story going, remember how he made it happen in his career in Oakland. Yep, exactly. And I just want to be another one of those uh, good statistics. Well, we're gonna want to have you out, have you on a lot, and we're expecting to we're gonna expect you to help lead the charge. This is gonna be a fun year. It is gonna be a fun year. I'm looking forward to it. Have a good opening day. Thank you. Appreciate. See, it. that's got to fire you up right here on A's Cast Live. Where does one community end and the next begin? Across the railroad tracks, on the other side of the river, is it between the east side and the west side? At Comerica Bank, we believe it's all one community, and we're all part of it. That's why Comerica has invested over $20 million for affordable housing, financial education, and workforce development in lower-income communities. Because when we raise expectations for everyone, we all rise. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. This is the place where you can dance like nobody's watching. Win like nobody's business. And get away like you mean So what are you waiting for? Come join the party. Take that evening out and make it a night you'll never forget. This kind of action can't be beat. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses and the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their easy news website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland and you get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. You deserve extra. Extra Mile is where you get it. You don't just deserve breakfast. You deserve extra fresh Mile One coffee just the way you like it. You deserve more than a quick bite. 
you deserve an extra satisfying array of hot foods, extra good snacks, and fountain drinks that help you go the extra mile. Plus, with extra mile rewards, you can earn free stuff. Visit Extra Mile at select Chevron and Texaco locations. See program terms and conditions for details. This is Chris Townsend, and if you're looking for a great place to eat and watch games, go see my friends at the Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek. The Chicken Pie Shop is one of the hottest restaurants in Walnut Creek. You're not going to find a better menu and come try their world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 86 years. Spacious indoor and outdoor dining, perfect for your next private party or corporate event. Don't forget free parking. For more information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, a first-class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get-togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award-winning venue. It's all there for you, championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. And the underdogs, Oakland Athletics, win their first championship since they were in Philadelphia in 1930. Hi, I'm Raleigh Fingers, Hall of Famer, three-time World Series champion with the Oakland A's, and World Series MVP. Winning takes teamwork, skill, and heart. So when you need an ace for a personal injury lawyer that will win you the game, go with the winning team. Call Venardi Zarata at 833-VZ for me or go to vzlawfirm.com. Bernardi Serrata, the official injury law firm of the Oakland A's. Like sports, business is about winning. Championship decisions are business decisions based on what it takes to help your company win. And that's why there's UBO Business Services, specializing in helping you win every day by streamlining workflows, managing documents, and providing the best-in-class office technology. Make your championship decision with UBO Business Services. Visit them at ubeo.com. That's ubeo.com. Unlock offers and receive exclusive in-game features by downloading the MLB Ballpark app for iPhone and Android today. Plus, get the latest information on game times, schedules, and more. Cast Live continues from Ricky Henderson Field. Here's Chris Townsend. I got the Got to put on the right headset. Let's go. When, when you want to be on. You're the face of the franchise. Everybody's here. I got to tell you, that fired me up. I've been talking about on this show. I've been talking about I've been talking about having a chip on your shoulder. I've been talking about I can't wait to talk to JD Davis. I had no idea what he was going to be like. I mean, I've seen interviews, but a lot of interviews are just standard interviews and I I I wanted to ask him cuz you don't know how you you have no idea how a player is going to react when you say you just got hosed by an organization basically. And do you got a chip on your shoulder? And you know what he said? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And he went on. How long was that answer? The, the chip on your shoulder, that had to have been almost three minutes. Yeah. It, I mean, the whole interview was like 11. And I would say major, almost half of it was from that. How many players do you ask? Because he, he could have avoided it. Could have not want to talk about it. Hey, could have been annoyed by it. Yeah. It's opening day. You don't know. He answered it like a pro. He answered it just the way I like it. And you know what? Guys like that, they're not going to be called the leaders, but it's guys like that that are leaders. You can tell. Right? Already young players are coming to him, asking him questions. And trust me, guys know when you're in for the fight. Are you in for the fight? He sounds like a guy who's in for it. And once again, how many guys have come to Oakland and end up having one of the best years, if not the best years, of their career? Yeah, I mean, we, we mentioned Fra Frank Thomas is a great example. Um, we talked about Kazmir, Rich Hill. Uh, I know there's been a lot of other guys that, um, I mean. Well, take even someone like when Dave Parker showed up in 1989. Yeah, that's a good one. 
Dave Parker already established MVP, already won a world champion. What he had done in Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. He came here to help him get over the line. I mean, Bartolo Colon. Oh, my God. <laughs> Talk about off the scrap heap. Yeah. Bartolo Colon. Who was Paul Blackburn? Yeah. I mean, now we have him healthy to start the year. Uh, after, you know, the All-Star season two years ago, last year started the year at the fingernail issue. Now he's healthy, and he's slotted to be the fourth starter in rotation, I want to say. So I think we're going lefty, ready, lefty, ready, ready. Are we really into who's one and who's five? Uh, I, I just – that, that doesn't even exist anymore. With the average team using 12 to 13 pitchers a year, who your top five does not – sounds great on opening day. Who's our five? But if you find me one team that's going to use under 10 starters – Good luck. I'd love to be that team. Good luck. We used 24 guys last year. Yeah. Are we worried about our five? Uh, we I mean, are, come on. Yeah. I think uh, it, it's good fodder for opening day to talk about the, the five. It is fodder. Yeah, for the five. Fodder means nothing. Yeah. Because, I mean, right now, you got a guy like Joe Boyle who has potential to be a really special pitcher. Like, if you just said, who's got the best stuff on the staff? Him. It's Joe Boyle. So I don't, I, oh, you got I, a big kid who hopefully his body holds up, who can throw 98 to 100 miles an hour, and he's got some breaking stuff that's nasty. I mean, Joe Boyle, he's special. Joe Boyle, by midseason, you could be going, he's the best guy. Are you then going to go, well, he was your fifth guy. No, you're not going to care. Oh, there are people out there. There will be people to say, well, he started the year as the A's fifth starter, but he's, he could be their best starter. Well, I don't listen to those people. Yeah, it's fodder, like I said. I mean, and J.P. Sears goes 30 starts again and gives you gives you two back-to-back years of 30 starts. Not many A's, not many A's pitchers in recent years have had back-to-back 30 starts. Uh, let's just say, like, most recently was... I think mean, Cole did it, right? Cole went 30 and 30. Yeah. And he's like, I would say other than that, it's it's been a while. There's our guy, Hernays. But we're going to get Hernays' father on. Yeah. That'll be cool. Yeah, it's going to spell. We got to get the guy. The Geloffs are sitting right there. We got all these proud parents. Zach Geloff's dad doesn't like my uh, salary cap. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because he thinks his son's going to be one of the guys that's going to that'd be hurt by the salary cap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're oh. going to help by a salary cap, oh. you'll love it. Well, I was going to say, we haven't been on. I mean, if you want to talk about salary cap, uh, don't sign with Boris. Jordan Montgomery, one year, 25 mil. We were on when it happened, weren't we? No, we were, it happened after we were done. Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. I mean, how about these guys? It's free agency. This is, this is the great thing about baseball that you do have that point in your life where you have that one shot. That one shot, there's 30 teams. You can take your services to any. You get to shop around. Some of these teams will bring you in, the wine and dine you. And you're trying to find that perfect spot for you, that perfect. By the way, Dave Renetti walked by in some hoodie sweatshirt. And then next thing I turn around, he looks like he's the CEO of the company. Come on, show, show. I want this is what, when you run the stadium, this is how pretty you look on opening day. I mean, he looks like he could be running. I mean, I would I would think so. I mean, he could be like the head of Google, Apple. Governor of California. I mean. Put the head. Can you? I don't want to mess up your hair. Can we put the, put the headset on? This man has been working for the Oakland Athletics since he was nine years old. Was it nine? Or 16. 16. But that's close. That's close. How many years? This is my 44th opening night. <laughs> I know, crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Are you serious? Yep. 1981, first one. I was a junior in high school. You know, a lot of people beat this building up, but this building means a lot to you, and you've done a lot to keep this building alive. Um, I have my stamp on this, I believe, more than anybody that's ever stepped foot in here, I think. As far as what's been done to this place since I've been here. Um, so I'm proud of the things that we've done here, for sure. Because it's not easy. It's not easy. There's, I mean, you know, every day there's some challenge, but uh, we work through it. We work through it. You're one of the great examples because I, you know, people ask, are always wondering, what's it like to work for the A's? 
and, and you and because because they see players come and go. But that's that's how really when you really look at every organization, players come and go. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's NBA, NFL, hockey. That's just the nature of it, sports. It's not it's not just the players. I mean, in my time frame working here, I mean, so many staff members have come and gone. I yeah, mean, I, I don't know how to. I don't know what to guess that number would be. It's thousands, though, that I've worked with, you know, in different eras, depending upon when it was. But it is like a family here because a, a lot of us have been around. You've been around a lot, like, but you just there's a lot of people that have been around for a long time. Yeah. I mean, my own department, I mean, most of them are well over 10 years each, you know, so there's a lot of continuity there. And throughout our staff, there's a lot of people that have been here for a long time. For God's sakes, Keith Lippman was 54 years. Steve Vucinich was 52 I mean, Pam Pitts knows where all Mickey. the bo- Mickey's been around. Pam Mickey, Pitts yeah. knows where all the bodies are buried. Yeah. I mean, there's some people have been around here for a long time. Yeah, yep. You excited? Absolutely. It's opening night. I think this team's going to be a lot better than people think. Yeah, I, I like what I see so far. So we'll see how it goes. You know, uh, I always go back to 2012, and uh, we were supposed to lose 100 games, and one of the most incredible seasons of all time. That team. If it stayed constructed the way it was when we went to Tokyo, they would have lost that many yeah. games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep. A lot of moves were made uh, to make that happen. Well, I just wanted to uh, say hello. You got it. I got to uh, run. Because you, you walked by earlier in a sweatshirt. It's kind of like, uh, you know. Superman. Like, yeah, kind of. No, There's no... Uh, there are no more phone booths anymore, but I my office did it, so it's all good. <laughs> Don't pay phones. Look it up, kids. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you very you much. Got it. Thanks. He's the CEO, the man who runs the stadium, the VP of Stadium Operations, David Renetti, for his 44th opening day. It's a long time. How many have I done? This is, uh, this is my... Sixth season with the A's. I've been doing, so you've been doing a lot longer than me. I've been doing opening day since 1997. I've been on the air at opening day, whether it's Giants or A's. That's uh, that would be uh, 27 years. Wow. Not 44, my friend. Not 44. <laughs> yeah, well, you're getting there. Yeah, the building means a lot. And we're now we're gonna. Uh, I want to see how uh, how voter runs his uh. Infield drills and, and batting practice. You, you, you want a little Stephen Vote trivia? Sure. Okay. Azusa I re- Pacific. I, re- I, I referenced this guy because I loved him as a player when I was a kid. He was just a hard nose. I'm trying to help you because this is really – it's it's not that hard, but it's way out of out of your – So it's not George You Brett. weren't born. It wasn't George Brett, and you weren't born. I'm just saying I've, res- I've referenced – I've referenced him during when we interview himbo okay so i'm gonna assume it's a philly that's all i'm saying you ready now for the question sure i okay so steven boat is the first opening day manager to begin his career within two years of finishing his playing career i'll read that again this is how amazing it is steven boat is the first opening day manager to begin his career within two years of finishing his playing career since who am I? I get done playing two years later. Larry Boa. Larry Boa. Friend of the program. Love Larry Boa. Played for the night. Now, we all remember him as the world, well, some of us do, the world champion shortstop for the Phillies, the Fightins in 1980. He played for the Mets in 85, which I do not remember, and then managed, which I do remember this because I was in San Diego at the time growing up, the 87 Padres. Wow. That's pretty remarkable. Now, I remember him as the Phillies manager. That's why I remember got my first taste of Larry Boa. The Padres were terrible and they were desperate. I don't think the Guardians are terrible and desperate. No. Uh, They're not great. But Terry Francona, uh, it's it's not it's it's a different scenario than yes. what Larry Boa had with yeah. the Friars. They were what seventy six and eighty six last year. They got the first pick in the draft this year for the first time in franchise history. I, I don't think it's one of those. Um, Stephen Vogt's going in to manage the Royals. You or can the, make the White Sox. You can make a case for them to be able to 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 not only win the division. I still think 
Minnesota is going to be the favorite. Uh, yeah. Look out, though, for the Tigers. Well, hey, they haven't a lot of run yet. Run prevention. One nothing <laughs> win today. Uh, but you could make a case. I No chance at the wild card. They'll, they'll have to win the division. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you could make the case for, I don't know, they get hot. They got pitching. You know, your boy Shane Bieber was at the driveline facility in Scottsdale. This fastball has gotten back up to around 94. Because it's gone down the last couple of years. So they, they yeah, were down everyone, to 91. Everyone was worried 94. about it. This is, I was reading a former Cy Young Award winner. I was reading a stat about him on Twitter. It was about like, this will be his, uh, I think his, I forgot what opening, fifth opening day? Fifth straight opening day, tying a club record with, I with mean, CC. No. Uh, Corey Kluber. Yes. And, um, you'll never get this. No. I just Hall hope- of Famer Stan Kovaleski. You'll remember, folks, he did it in 1917 through 1921. <laughs> the only guy that had more is like, was Bob Feller, right? Look at the security here. No. Security's here. Oh. Everybody be cool. Everybody be cool. I mean, Jason Silva's in a suit. I mean. Everybody be cool. Security's here and they're in suits. Wait, where's Roy? Yeah, where is Roy? How did I get on the field without Roy scanning my badge today? How did that happen? He worked on Monday. Would he need a day off already? Wow, when security's in suit, now you know it's opening day. It's all a fraud. I mean, we were asked how many times where she said, I- uh, I have one suit, and I work for weddings. We have a sponsor, Link Soul. Yes. That is a sponsor of A's Cast and A's Cast Live. We wear our sponsor's gear. We thank you, Link Soul. By the way, uh, new spring, new fabrics. It's a whole It's a whole new ball game with Link Soul. Go to linksoul.com. So I'm telling you, Link Soul, and, and Cody will attest to this, we love our sponsors, Nest Bending, Link Soul. The Link Soul, like the clothing is good. You can go out. It's just not yeah. golf. I mean, you go out. You, I mean, dinner. I wear the same. That pullover. They got that, stuff for the beach. They got. They got. It's it's for everyday wear. The the pullover that I got last year, um, I wear it everywhere. I love that thing. I mean, it's. I looked at the retail price of it. And I was like, this is incredible. I can wear this anywhere. You wear it everywhere. And you br- wear it on the airplane. You wear yeah. it in spring training. Yes. You ain't, you wear it going probably, out. If we have a game tomorrow, I'll probably wear it to the game tomorrow. I got it. By the way. It will come out of this has weekend. Has anybody noticed Slim and Trim Cody here? Yeah, down 30 pounds. Cody's lost 30 pounds. In a month and a half. Am I going to make a TV star out of you yet? Now we just change your hair. Everything's going to be great. Yeah, the hair, the hair's next. Um, the mustache is going to stay for a bit. I, I, I have no problem with you with the beard. Yeah, no. that's kind of covers my... up the old. But the, you're face getting, the face is getting thinner. That's yeah, why I'm you, okay you, with it. You're gonna lo- you're gonna lose all that as you you get skinny uh, and cute. Yeah, well, He's I, getting skinny and cute. I found out, you know, during the off season that I was uh, I'm a type two diabetic, so I had to change a lot of dietary stuff. So it's been um rough ish. You know, I cut back a lot on the drinking, and you know that's easy to do. It's the getting up every morning, running on the treadmill for 35, 40 minutes that a, a change for me. But it, I love I love it. I do it every single day. So I'll, I'll let everybody know. Thank you for noticing. Our great sponsor, Link Soul, will be sending us some new stuff. And they asked me for the sizes. I'm not ordering the extra large anymore. That's the challenge. Yeah. I mean, you're getting larges. Yeah. So you got to fit in it. I, I got to my goal that I wanted to be at by opening day. Uh, t- today's opening day. Um, so I'm actually below the goal I wanted to be. Like, I blocked, lost more weight than I thought I would. So. We'll keep going. Uh, we'll see, you know, in the summer where we can get. I got. I'm going on a guy's trip to the East Coast um, during the All Star break, so we're gonna have that. As they say, a beach body for that. Have you put? I've already put my time in for the All Star break since we're talking about opening day. Uh, yes. Um, no, but I will. Um, it's funny because uh, I made this. I was talking about this the other day. I was, I was talking with uh, one of our coworkers on Bart on the way up here this morning. Um, how you missed opening day a couple years ago because you had a trip to the Masters planned and you weren't going to. I'm like, I would. No, 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 you know, no, 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 no. No, because we had the lockout, so the opening day got pushed back. It and was it, in it, Philly. Yeah, it was in Philly. So, like, I didn't miss opening no, day. No, no. You missed this opening day. For I the missed season. opening day on the road. Yeah, okay. Philly. Who cares? Yeah, okay. John Crook. I was giving everybody on the traveling party places to go eat. Without me, they wouldn't have places to go. And one of the best places you got was from Jason Stark. Ralph's. <laughs> It's an incredible old school mob Italian restaurant <laughs> in the mob part of town. It's awesome. Um, Before we get the to- yeah, by the way, that master's trip didn't suck. Yeah, of course. Uh, we got like ten minutes till four. Should okay, we- so I want to get back to Geloff because I'm looking at his parents right here. Um, so last year, 
Geloff finished with a 267 average, which, by the way, in today's times, that's pretty good. Yes. I'm used to looking down, and it says 216 with players, so I'll take 260. His OPS was 841. 14 home runs, 14 stolen bases. And as J.D. Davis was coming over, I was I, I rushed through this. His OPS plus was 137. Okay. For people who don't know, league average is 100, so he was 37 better than league average That's, as a rookie who came up in July. I mean, Mark McGuire hit 49 bombs his rookie year, so his was 164. Yeah, they, you don't get a lot of rookies to do that. Right? Um, but the only, yeah, the only guys that do it have done it are uh, Aaron Judge and uh, Pete Alonzo. Mitchell Page was 154. He had a good, he had a really good rookie year. And Cespedes was really wasn't a rookie. This guy had been on the Cuban team. There, but Cespedes was 139. But anyway, Geloff was 137. I mean, this this as we talk about the 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 year of growth. It's the year of this is the theme we're going with. It's the year of growth. This is to watch Geloff grow into a star. This is the guy goes to the All Star game. This is the guy that you see prime time. This is the guy everybody wants to interview already. MLB Network when they did their trips around the spring training facilities, bang, yeah. Geloff's the guy they want to talk to. This is the year Zach Geloff starts to take that. He becomes that not a good player. You start to, this is a guy that you see in all-star games, and he he represents this. He becomes the face of the franchise. Was it BK that had him in his top 10 second baseman already? Shredder. Or the Shredder. Okay. The Shredder. I, I knew it was one of them. Not BK. I don't know if BK had him in there. The Shredder yeah, had it. Top 10 second baseman at baseball That's already. where they take all the numbers. They call it the Shredder, and they put it all together. And give me your top 10 second baseman. He was top 10 yeah. already. As a, yeah. Already. Played only, how many games did he play again? I don't have the total have number, number of but, but he played. He came up in July. He had 300 plate appearances. Yeah, he came up in July, so he played essentially half a season in the major leagues, and that's what he was able to do. Him in the full season, I'm. He's a guy that a lot of people are excited for. I mean, uh, little in you know, little chalk here, but he was a, a consensus pick for the ward leader from all the broadcasters. You and guys are all chalk. No, I didn't go. To, I didn't go. Of course, I you did guys not. Went with I Geloff. did not go with Geloff. That's weak. We got to go over that at some point before we're done. Yeah, when are we going to do that? Uh, well, you want to talk about like, we can do it now or do it after David Forrest. Well, I want to get Geloff's games, and of course, you, you, ba- Baseball Reference. It's has, at the very, it should be. Oh, it doesn't say it. Uh, we got to get off. They got to get off Geloff being minor league stats. Uh, Geloff played sixty nine games. Sixty nine games, three hundred plate appearances, two hundred seventy abs. It's a beast. He can do everything. That's why I compare him to a young Ryan. That's why I compare him to a Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg. He can do everything. When you he's, told me he's got that kind of ability. When you said that his dad didn't like your, I was like, he's he's gonna say he didn't like the Ryan Sandberg <laughs> comparison. <laughs> no, that's not it. That's not it. Um, Forced is in what? Uh, what time is it? Forced is in are we eight gonna have, minutes. Are we gonna have time for this, or should we wait? Uh, well, we could. I can get it through in in seven minutes. Forces David's very punctual. We know that. He'll be Very here. Pu- I saw him. David was down here. Let's do it. I, is David excited? I think he is. I mean, I, I'm. I, I can't. I don't know. I can't get the sense of excitement through him uh, from him through text. But D- David's never been a real excitable guy. I'm wondering if this season, if he's got. Because I mean, come on, they lost 50 games last year. No, one fifty. It was. Uh, oh yeah, only oh, one fifty yeah. games. L- lost 112. So if they lost 50. That's it really was good. Brutal. That JD Davis had it at 33. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, what? Oh, oh. All right. So the way we do this. Um, I ask everyone uh, uh, quickly. Jose Ramirez has entered the field. Jose, Jose, as they like to call him, it's his twelfth big league season. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. Okay, now you saying that some people go really, really. Stop. Well, how about this? He's finished in the top ten in AL MVP voting each of the past four years. Did he? I think he was. His 309 RBI since just 2021 is fourth in baseball. Go ahead and say switch hitter. He does everything. Go ahead and say team stat. Um, oh wow! <laughs> you want to get Jose Ramirez over here and say, "Yeah, team stat." No, I don't mean think anything. I don't think it's a team stat. I hate um, when people say that. Yes, he will have a plaque in Cooperstown, yeah. and he will go in as a guardian. Uh, ooh. will he though? He played as an Indian too. He'll go in as a guardian. Yeah. Well, yes, obviously. But so funny. He was both. Yeah. Okay. So I ask everyone, this is our broadcast. This is our radio broadcast. So Ken and Vince and Johnny, uh, us, 
Ray, who was a part of our A's cast team, Jessica Kleinschmidt. We asked Martin Gallegos and Bill Moriarty. Who will lead the A's in war, home runs, stolen bases, wins, saves, and pitchers? Let's go. Pitcher Who's going to be the leaders this year? Let's do this. Ken Korak, the Radio Hall of Famer, said war, Zach Geloff. Langoliers, home runs. Uh, everyone went chalk and pretty much said SD for stolen bases. Oh, that's chalk. Uh, Paulie Winday for wins. Uh, he said a tie between Mason Miller and Danny Jimenez in saves. No. And J.P. Sears will lead the team in Ks. JP Sears, huh? Vince Catronio. That's just that that's a good bet because you may get the most starts out of yes. JP Sears. So so Vince Catronio, Geloff for Langoliers home runs, Ruiz, Alex Wood for wins, Mason Miller saves, JP Sears and strikeouts. What did him and Korak coordinate together <laughs> on this thing? That they, they, they can't have different opinions. Uh uh, our, our other esteemed radio broadcaster, the great Johnny Dosco. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Chad Smith did not make the list for saves this year. <laughs> uh, War, Zach Geloff. Home runs, Langoliers. Dude, this is just Chalk City. The Langoliers home runs not. Well, it's becoming Chalk yeah. with three straight picks. Uh, stolen bases, Ruiz. Wins, Blackburn. Saves, Miller. K's Wood. Okay, so there's that. Uh, Martin Gallegos. Geloff and War. Rooker and home runs. Ruiz, uh, Sears and wins, Miller and saves, Joe Boyle and strikeouts. I like Joe Boyle and strikeouts. Uh, War, Je this is Jessica Kleinschmidt, War, Blade, home runs, Rooker, stolen bases, Langoliers. Langoliers, though, so that is she's not. A, she's a year after my case. Jessica Kleinschmidt, not chalk on stolen bases. I like it. Wins, Blackburn. Saves Miller, strikeout Sears. Ray, the karate kid. Nota for war. Langoliers home runs. Geloff and steals. Mitch Spence with the vulture wins. Wow. Uh, the rule five pick. I let, dude, that's a good list. Mason Miller for K's and yeah. our saves and, and Sears for saves. All right, me, I want Nota for war. All right. J.D. Davis and home runs. I like it. I, I by, by the way, I'm about to change everything to J.D. Davis. Lawrence Butler. Oh, my God. There he is. Congratulations. It's finally here. Ladies Congrats. and gentlemen, Stephen Vogt, one of the great A's. One of the great A's. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Congratulations. Good luck. Uh, I, Davis, Butler and save, uh, steals. Joe Boyle and wins. Joe Boyle and K's. And Mason Miller and saves. And we'll get we'll yours and, and Bill Moriarty right after David. We'll save the two for last. Do you think David will participate? Oh, I'm going to go with maybe not. You don't think you could try? I mean, you could ask. What, what the worst thing you say is no. Does that, did that tell you everything you need to know? So here we are doing the show. Stephen Vogt, I was after this show going to go wherever he was or just to say good luck. He comes over to hug us. I mean, you, you employed him. I was, <laughs> I'm just the, I'm just the talking head stiff. Yeah, but I mean, the fact that he came over to hug. Everyone gives out hugs on opening day. That's kind of the vibe. So. That's pretty good. Shows, that shows you everything about him, though. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm excited. Happy opening day. I'm excited. Did you, what's not to be excited J.D. About? Davis got me fired oh, up. Oh, good. I didn't know J.D. Davis had that in him. So I, I knew, you know, sometimes you don't know a guy and you're like, what the hell? I'm gonna ask the question anyway, because it could be yeah. you never know how it's gonna go. I asked him about having a chip on his shoulder after what happened with San Francisco. Okay, and he went on for like three minutes, <laughs> and he got me fired. I'm ready to. I'm that's, ready. That's, I, I'm too old to do anything the, about it, but I'm ready to go. Best interview around, Chris. You get the you get the tough answers. It, 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 it the next thing you know, where it felt like you know Notre Dame play like a champion today. <laughs> Hit the sign and let's get it. Are you Good. excited? I am absolutely. It's opening day. How much better do you feel? now than last year when we did this oh uh i felt fine last year when we did this so maybe i was wrong you always <laughs> feel that there has to be a difference right you know this team's better i than do us. i like this team i like this team i like the spring we had i like what mark has done so no i don't want to shy away from that but i always feel good you always are optimistic this day and feel like things can go as as well as you planned all right i always like to have like a little theme to get going to me it's like Watch him grow. Okay. Watch him grow. Like when I think, watch Geloff become that guy. Watch Nick Allen become the everyday shortstop. Lawrence Butler excites the you-know-what. 
Uh, JJ Blade, I just I love JJ. JJ Blade, we've known he's had the talent. Like this is the time for JJ Blade to just show everybody I am an everyday player in Major League Baseball. Like just to watch yeah. all these guys grow into what we think they can be. No, I totally agree. And the, you know, you didn't mention Shea, but I, I feel like Shea is that guy too. You know, watch this guy become one of the better catchers in the league and play, play every day. I mean, look, if we're up to the coaching staff, Shea would be out there 162 times. You know, it's not going to happen, but he's in that on that list too. And all these guys, I mean. Look, I, I sit back here, sort of try and be realistic and know there are going to be ups and downs. But it, it, again, with the theme of my, my day, I'm excited to watch all those guys you just mentioned kind of become what we think they are. Let's get to the tough part, and that's injuries. Like, yeah. and, it, like Andy, are you brought in and we got to see stuff like on on um, on Twitter, X, whatever. We got to see him hit home runs in winter ball, then he gets here and he's red hot. And then right before this thing starts, he goes down. That one was a bummer. Yeah. Cause it's like it paid your gamble was paying off. <laughs> you know, he didn't strike out once all spring. Are you serious? Yeah. So no, that one, that one stinks. And uh freak thing just planted his, his right leg in the outfield and felt a little pop. And uh, you know, hopefully six weeks from now we'll be seeing him, but that would have been exciting to have him in the middle of the lineup. So, yeah, I mean, we got eight guys starting on the IL, a lot of pitchers, um, but that's no different from across the league. I, I went through and looked at all of the ILs across the game today, and you're talking about seven guys, eight guys, nine guys, six pitchers, seven pitchers. It's it's everywhere. So everybody has to deal with it. We're not we're not alone, um, and we'll get through it, and we got guys who will step up, and, and Kotz has that next man up mentality. He does a great job of instilling that. Um, but I, yeah, there's, there's no escaping. I'd love to have Miguel in the lineup tonight. DeGrom, Scherzer, Verlander, Cole, Kershaw, all on the IL. That's 12 Cy Young awards and six world series all starting the season. Oh, then Shohei camp pits, uh, Sandy camp pits, Alcantara, uh, Shane McClanahan camp pitch. And then the closer Felix Bautista. I mean, it's yeah. stars. It, it, it's all over the place. It is what it is in our game. Some of these guys, you know, with you, let's start with Lawrence Butler because to me it's important because he's a guy you drafted. Yeah, he's a guy you've raised. It, it's it's what you want to show everybody in your system. Like if you do things the right way, this is what can happen to you. Would it mean for you to say Lawrence Butler, you're on this team? Yeah, I mean it, it feels that way with with a lot of the homegrown guys, and not that they're you know not that it matters how a guy gets here because whether you trade for him or sign him as a free agent, whatever they're 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 A's, they're big leaguers. But with Lawrence, with Zach, with McCann, you know I think Kyle McCann puts Eric Kubota over 100 big leaguers drafted and signed. By the way, it's pretty impressive. Um, but with all these guys, yeah, Lawrence is a great great example because. He was, he was a skinny high schooler, and he went out to the Penn League, and you were like, eh, is it there, is it not? And he just stuck with it, and he came back after the pandemic with a chip on his shoulder, and and he worked his way here. And now now you see him blossoming into a big leaguer, into an everyday guy. And you saw him spray line drives all over the place in spring training, and, and, uh, and he wants to be a leader just the same way Zach does. Yeah, you think about that, 100 guys. Like, I've never really thought about that. Like, how many guys you draft, they get to the big – whether they get to the big leagues with you or not, right? right? They're big leagues. They got to the big leagues. Yeah. That is – how's he doing? He's doing great. Yeah, he's out there seeing players this year for the draft. It was nice to have him in Arizona. So, no, it's it's pretty amazing the longevity that Eric's had in that position and and all the guys that have, have played out here. I'm happy because we had that – we had that – we had that moment that was really ugly between you and Cody in Nashville over the Rule 5. Uh, Mitch Spence is on the team. Is Cody going to admit that maybe I got this one right? <laughs> so what? Yeah. I mean, we, I mean we, we, got, we got some coworkers now saying he's going to lead the team and win. So, I mean. <laughs> no, it's great that Mitch Mitch pitched his way onto yeah. this team and obviously got stretched out as a starter. And, and who knows, maybe down the road that's still there, but he's going to pitch some valuable innings out of the pen for sure. What, what are your plans with Ruiz? What do you think his role will be early in the season? I think Esty's going to play against lefties. I think he's going to be a weapon late in the game for Cots when he's not in the lineup. And, you know, we, we continue to hope to see that growth, that offensive, you know, on-base percentage that we talked about, his ability to, to hit good pitching. And, um, you know, he'll probably play more in the corners right away because J.J., we hope, is out there every day. Lawrence did a nice job in center field. But, um, but hopefully we have a little runway for SD to continue to improve. 
Uh, getting back to J.D. Davis, do you think he can man the spot third base every day? I think he's going to get that opportunity. Yeah, I think we'll, you know, we'll spot him against some tough righties. I mean, that's his history is that he, he crushes lefties. And, you know, we've got Toro from the left side who can play third. That'll help. I think Daryl's going to get some time at third base, too, because we don't want him to just come up here and sit. But J.D. is going to be going to be the primary guy. He's going to get that first shot. Yeah, you think about Abraham Toro. I was kind of looking at the just when we were starting to look at the roster, and all of a sudden I'm like, are you going to keep six outfielders? If you keep six outfielders, you only have five infielders because you have to have two catchers. But it kind of worked its way. Did, 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 yeah. did injuries and stuff really help out Toro in the end? It, it works its way out. I mean, look, Abraham had a great year in AAA last year. He's had success in the big leagues. So we brought him here with the idea he was going to be on the club. He was going to play all over the place, which I think is a better role for him than maybe – you know, every day at one spot because his versatility really helps. There's a guy, you know, I love and he gets on base and Ryan Noda, if Ryan Noda does everything that he did last year and just, just hits more, more yeah. power and everything. I think he'd be an all-star first base. I totally agree. And and that's one of the guys who Darren Bush has spent a lot of time with in the spring. And I think if you look carefully, you'll see the change in his hand position, the change of the angle of his bat, because he's got the eye. He doesn't have to swing at anything he doesn't like. But when he does put the bat through the zone, I think they think like you do. He can have more power. We saw him pull that ball the other night in San Francisco down the line where normally he doesn't get to that ball. So I think there are good things ahead. It's just it's it's something you can't teach. I wish we could, yeah. no, or we, everybody we, would do right, it. We'd have twenty six of them. <laughs> so no, but it's it's a skill. We saw how it helped him last year get over those sort of first couple months of being a, a new guy in the big leagues, and it will continue to play. You know, one of the tough things last year, because you've been around it for so long. That's why it's like so easy to talk about with you and all the years with Billy. Is like you've had great years, you've had down years, you've been through it. But Mark Kotze, somebody's got to help him, right? He's so competitive. We, we, you know, just to let everybody know, we would go in early to his office and you could just tell he's just, he's angry and he hates <laughs> losing. And it's just, you want to like give him a hug and every once in a while I'd be like, so man, how are you? How yeah. you doing? Everything. You're the guy that's got to help him through that. You've been through it. So, so do you feel like it's going to be easier this year? For Mark Kotze, helping Mark Kotze. I hope so. I think Kotze deserves it. I mean, like you said, he he works so hard. He wants to win so badly, and he puts so much of himself into the players, into the staff. I think he's put together a great staff. I'm really happy with how this group has worked this spring and put the actually put the time in in the off season too. We had a lot of meetings this off season. Guy, coaches met with players online, Zoom meetings, stuff like that. We really, really worked hard this offseason. So I, I I think Cots deserves that, no doubt. We don't talk about it enough because these coaches, whether it's Emo or Aldo, or we use all the nicknames, all these, they put so much. You talked about Darren Bush. These guys put so much of their life and so much of their time into helping these players. And when the players and the team loses, it's hard. Yeah. It's really, really hard. No, they take it personally. These guys really believe they can have an effect on an impact on all those players, and they take it personally. I, I walked up, you know, to the clubhouse this morning from the weight room about 10 a.m., and a couple of coaches already in there working. So they, they're ready to go. 10? The game's at like 10. What, <laughs> what the hell are you doing at 10? I was working out. They, <laughs> they were working. <laughs> starting, starting the season – Last like last year, you know, the whole thing, like, you know, people want to say it's early. It's like, man, you got to win because you don't win early. It's hard. Yeah, it's really hard. We saw it last year. Yeah, we just, dug a hole last year. So just talk us through that, like what, what you want to see. We know we know this team's not going to you know win every game, but just what you want to see at least early from the team. Yeah, I, you, you need to be competitive. I and mean, we had so many games last April. We've talked about it. We talked about it. We gave up double digit runs. We just were behind. We were trying to just find enough innings out of the pen. You want to be competitive. Hopefully our starting staff is a lot different than it was a year ago. You've got wood and stripling at the top with some experience, some ability to manage games. You want to stay in games and give Cots and Emo the chance to, to put together a game plan every night, not just say like, oh my God, how are we going to get 27 outs? So use the guys they have at their disposal to win games. Use the guys on the bench to, in crucial situations, run Ruiz, pinch hit or her nice, whatever it is, uh, and be competitive every night. Teaching people to have patience. Let's end on this. Teaching people to have patience and acquiring and just learning patience. It's very hard to do. Someone going to teach me? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm going to give you a lot of credit because look at this offseason. 
And look at your yeah. team now. Yeah. We, look look where we were. When, when Winter meetings was, what, the 5th? December 5th? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere in there, yeah. Right? It was like December 5th, and you're like, well, we'll see. And like, okay. And then all of a sudden, you got Wood, you got Stripley, J.D. Davis out of nowhere. I mean, you got it. You are able to stay patient while everybody else is panicking. How do you do that? Because we, we you didn't stayed have, patient. Yeah, we worked. didn't have a choice this offseason. We had to. We knew you know, we, we weren't going to participate in the free agent market early on. We knew the teams were going to look around from a trade standpoint. Um, I think I said at the time when we traded for Ross, I, I had that conversation with Farhan November 5th at the GM meetings. Like it didn't happen for another two and a half months or whatever it was, but you know, we laid the groundwork there. So we have to be patient. My group baseball ops did a great job of, of holding on to the information, making sure we surveyed what was out there. And, and we, yeah, we did make some, some deals after the first of the year, brought some guys in and it's a new group. Uh, quickly got to ask you about Mason Miller. I mean, I, if there's three wins in a row, I don't think we're going to see him three straight. Probably that, not. And that's where Danny Jimenez is huge because he has that experience. Yeah. But what, what, when you look at at the back of the bullpen late in games, what are your expectations? I mean, you couldn't really have a better spring than Mason did. I know he gave up the homer in his you know, second to last outing or whatever it was, but went out there. His stuff was awesome. He performed, struck guys out. I mean, he, if there was any question at the beginning of the spring who was going to pitch at the end of the game, I think he answered it. Went out and averaged 102 in a game in surprise. So it's kind of kind of hard not to put stuff like that at the back of your pen. <laughs> <laughs> and and with the idea, you get him into games more, yeah. you got more chances to win with him. Yeah. And and yeah, like I said in the offseason, we gotta try and keep him healthy. This is our best chance right now. He's done a great job. We'll see how he bounces back, you know, back to back games or every other day, whatever. That stuff is still to be seen, but Right now, he's feeling good. Our goal was to get here with him healthy. We've done that. You're like the parent that's taking the child to school, like you lead him up to school, right? There wasn't enough bubble wrap for us in spring <laughs> training to get guys shipped up to Oakland. It was, it was so funny. Like the, the last the game in San Francisco, was like, there's no way you're going to see Zach go up in the lineup. <laughs> there's no, no way. Shay didn't play. Zach didn't play. JJ didn't play. No, we, we had to get here. All righty. Here we are. Good luck. Let's go. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll sell it. Thanks, Tom. We're, we're going to make it happen. All right, buddy. Congratulations. We got here. Opening day 2024. That's the David Ford Show right here on A's Cast Live. We're getting you ready for first pitch next right here on A's Cast. Nestled in the hills of San Jose, minutes from Silicon Valley, Cinnabar Hills Golf Club offers 27 holes of championship golf, a first-class pro shop, practice facility, and great food in the grill. This time of year also means family and business get-togethers. Let the folks at Cinnabar Hills make your event unforgettable while enjoying their award-winning venue. It's all there for you. Championship golf, a great space for any events, and incredible food. See it all at CinnabarHills.com. That's CinnabarHills.com. Where does one community end and the next begin? Across the railroad tracks? On the other side of the river? Is it between the east side and the west side? At Comerica Bank, we believe it's all one community, and we're all part of it. That's why Comerica has invested over $20 million for affordable housing, financial education, and workforce development in lower-income communities. Because when we raise expectations for everyone, we all rise. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. This is the place where you can dance like nobody's watching. Win like nobody's business get away like you mean so what are you waiting for come join the party take that evening out and make it at night you'll never forget this kind of action can't be beat This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. You deserve extra. Extra Mile is where you get it. You don't just deserve breakfast. You deserve extra fresh Mile One coffee just the way you like it. You deserve more than a quick bite. 
you deserve an extra satisfying array of hot foods, extra good snacks, and fountain drinks that help you go the extra mile. Plus, with extra mile rewards, you can earn free stuff. Visit Extra Mile at select Chevron and Texaco locations. See program terms and conditions for details. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is the number one brand of online mattresses in the Bay Area's favorite mattress store. Take home the Easy Breather Pillow. The New York Times calls it their number one pick. You can navigate their Easy News website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland, and you get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. If you're looking for a great place to eat and watch games, go see our friends at the Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek. The Chicken Pie Shop is one of the hottest restaurants in Walnut Creek. You're not going to find a better menu and come try their world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 86 years. Spacious indoor and outdoor dining, perfect for your next private party or corporate event. Don't forget free parking. For more information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. And the underdogs, Oakland Athletics, win their first championship since they were in Philadelphia in 1930. Hi, I'm Raleigh Fingers, Hall of Famer, three-time World Series champion with the Oakland A's and World Series MVP. Winning takes teamwork, skill, and heart. So when you need an ace for a personal injury lawyer that will win you the game, go with the winning team. Call Venardi Zarata at 833-VZ for me or go to vzlawfirm.com. Bernardi Serrata, the official injury law firm of the Oakland A's. Like sports, business is about winning. Championship decisions are business decisions based on what it takes to help your company win. And that's why there's UBO Business Services, specializing in helping you win every day by streamlining workflows, managing documents, and providing the best-in-class office technology. Make your championship decision with UBO Business Services. Visit them at ubeo.com. That's ubeo.com. If you're looking for the latest green and gold gear for the 2023 season, then look no further than athletics.com slash shop for your officially licensed gear. That's athletics.com slash shop. The A's YouTube page is your go-to destination for A's video content. Get access to great highlights, exclusive behind-the-scenes content, Classic Games, Ace Cast Live, and more. Visit youtube.com slash athletics. You're listening to Ace Cast Live. Here's Chris Townsend. Oh, man, what a day. What a day. Once again, it was great to see Steve Vogt come over. Give us all a hug. That was cool. Yeah, that was great. I wasn't expecting that. They- was not expecting that. I turned around and I. It's Steve Vogt. Uh, because th- I was told by our good friends in the the Guardians that uh, do not even do not even ask for him. Yeah. But, <laughs> when we were at the winter meetings. Yeah, because we got Steve at the winter meetings. It was really cool, and um, I'm so happy for him. Wouldn't it be great to see Stephen go on a on a run where he's in Cleveland for you know 15 years and wins a World Series and I mean. I, I, Good people. I mean, Steve he's, Vogt is such a genuine, great person. And he's following Terry Francona. It's not like he's following a guy that no one knew him. He's following a legend. What did he win? True. He, he took him to a World Series. He won. In, what do you mean, what did he win? He won a lot in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He won, oh, so, he won uh, two or three AL Manager of the Year awards in Cleveland. Uh, two or three. I think it was May two, three. Might be three. He won three World Series in Boston, right? Oh, Two. four. Was he the manager when they won? Oh, no, he was like, oh, before they won. Or yeah, after they won the won one. Two. Yeah. He broke the curse, then won the next, next one. one. He didn't win the third. The third was John Farrell before they won again in 18. With Ben Charrington? Yeah. Had been. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Anyway, so we got to get back to it. We got to give yours and Bill Moriarty's predictions for this year. Uh, you want war? Oh, yeah, this is mine. Wait a minute. Who, who are you doing me before? Oh, uh, I'll do Moriarty last. Yeah, uh, Moriarty first. You do me last. Bill Moriarty from uh, Athletics Farm. He did War Geloff home runs. Rooker Ruiz. 
uh, Sears and wins, Miller and saves, and J.P. Sears and strikeouts. So very chalk from Bill Moriarty, but glad to have him. Involved. I don't go chalk. Hold on, I'm getting oh, to old Tito Francona. Yeah, he he was oh uh, four and 07 with the Red okay. Sox. Okay, how many times you Farrell. won manager of the year? He won three times, all with your Cleveland Indians slash Guardians. So it was three. He didn't win one of them. He went two World Series in Boston, never won AL Manager of the Year. Go figure. Uh, yeah, I was I was trying. Now I'm confused. Um, again, crack staff. Look up who was the Red Sox manager. John Farrell was the Farrell. Okay. I couldn't remember if it was him or whatnot. what. What are they? We have new interns, and what are they doing? They're sitting here listening to the show. Yeah, well, we got first time caller, Patrick's long time listener. Yeah, Patrick's running the stream for us. Well, because oh, I can't okay. be in front of the computer. So, well, is he looking at Michael? Michael's a great photo taker, so he takes photos for us. I like it. I got him always working. Do your skills. Show him your skills early. All right. So you did uh, war. This Jay- is not chalk. My lists are never chalk. War as Jay- Tyler Sodestrom, I had leading in war <laughs> and, home, and runs. home runs. How'd that work out? Uh, was that worse than than Chad Smith saves though? With no, Johnny? Chad Smith was the, the Johnny. Johnny takes a kick in that one. Johnny, bro, also, bro. Uh, Ch- Chad, I love him in Triple A, bro, bro. He also bro. remember Johnny also that Johnny did pick the World Series to be the Cardinals and Blue Jays last year. So just putting that out there. Sorry, Johnny. White Sox won the division. We didn't do that this year. So all right, here you go. You did JJ Bladé in war. JJ Bladé in war, baby. Uh, J.J. Blade and home run. J.J. Blade and home runs. Nick Allen I'm, is hey, a stealer. Let's just say I'm all in on J.J. Yeah. Blade in 2024. Nick Allen and his eight career stolen bases in the major league level. Yeah, still lead team steals. Nicky, Ra- Nicky swipe it. Nicky swipe it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ross Stripling the lead in wins and yeah. uh, strikeouts. I'm going with strip. I'm going with the death ball. Uh, yeah, stripling the lead. When you stri- got a gyro movement on yeah. your ball, and then I say you put snot. On the ball, it's great. I mean, you're talking about we should have played all the lines. Jalapeno right? juice, yeah. uh, and uh, saves uh, Danny Jimenez. No, the bet, the bet was it was this one in uh, who did I have say? Oh, yeah, Danny Jimenez. Yeah, you guys are all going Mason Miller. I'm gonna go Danny Jimenez. What do you mean? Ken Korak did both. That's that's he did a tie. Correct. I like everybody, but he's Ken Korak, he can do whatever he wants. All right, <laughs> I'm just telling you this right now. I think I do really well on this list this year. Last year, I was not very good. Mark the tape. Mark the tape. Check the tape. I think I do very good this year. I think you're all going to look back and go, man, Townsend really nailed that one. As long as I, I just need Joe Boyle to hit for wins and strikeouts. Yeah, that's going to help. Uh, and, and J.D. Davis. I'm the only person to pick J.D. Davis leading home runs. Was I'm a believer. Was it in Major League One or Major League Two? One of the greatest lines ever. There's a curse word in it. But when they're looking at the lineup and he goes, who the F are these guys? No, that's the all the fans when they're going through and they're like, they're, they're like, who? Who the <laughs> Willie Mays Hayes, Ricky Vaughn. It was I never, one, yeah. never heard of half of these guys. Who the F are yeah. the and then the uh, the uh the Asian groundskeeper was written. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. I, let me see if I uh, who the F are these guys? I I used to have it because we, we used to use it for the um um, uh, we did it when we put the Giants. We were using because they had a bunch of nobody, like people in their in their Ooh, lineup. Uh, I don't think I. I'm gen- I, I. This is genuine. I'm excited about this year. I think these guys, if they, if they win, my prediction, I think they win at least seventy. If they do that, there's going to be a lot, lot of excitement around this team. Yeah, because then, because then you could uh, you you'll be actually be talking about can, can they. Can they get to 500? Can you imagine if they got to 500? It's hard to believe. Yeah, it'd be a 30. That's why the, that's why I had the. That's I mean that's a huge. It's hard to believe, but I mean 70. But if you start to see these players emerge and really show you what the future can be, it'll be a big, you know, with all the noise away from the team. Because what's going to happen after today? Is you're gonna get back into all right? It's back to being baseball, and we're gonna be back to the the. It's a long summer. I mean, we're gonna be working on Easter. We're gonna be working on Easter Sunday. I didn't even know it was Easter this week this weekend. What? Yeah, I had no idea. You didn't know? No, I didn't know until my mom mentioned on the phone yesterday. You're, hey, not, you- you're not. You're not gonna have your your traditional Easter egg hunt. Uh, I think my wife's working. So, are you coming to the game? Uh, Sunday. I I think I might actually come up this weekend. If the, well, if it doesn't rain. 
could it could be if the game doesn't happen tomorrow. It could be a double dip this weekend. Okay, I'm just gonna say this: if tomorrow at four o'clock you tune in to A's Cast Live, and we're not here, we're somebody. Oh, we're supposed to be in the treehouse tomorrow. Anyway. Treehouse happy hour tomorrow. All right, we'll be in the treehouse for happy hour tomorrow. Or we could be. In the press box, or we or could be... we could have the day off because they call the game. Yeah. I, I don't. They don't want to call the game because they don't want to do doubleheaders early. But they they called uh, Atlanta Philly. They who's, called a, uh, who's and, the uh, other game. Mets Mets Brewers already called. Yeah, they, they called oh, them. Their they, opening days were. Eh. Yeah, they did it. They called it yesterday because you don't want to like get like tomorrow stripling going and then call it. You just yeah. you you'd rather just be like everybody stay home. Uh, we would like to thank Mark Kotze and the Mark Kotze Show. Mark Kotze show brought to you by nestbedding.com. Love where you sleep. We also want to thank J- JD Davis got me fired up. He's going to be Ace Total Access. We're going to replay that. Both segments from ours today. Yes. Two, two I, type, two times. He got me JD fired. Davis. JD Davis, like I, I, I threw a pitch and I didn't know how it was going to go and he knocked it out of the park. Yeah. He, he was, was great. great. Yeah. I went over. And we want to thank David Forrest. And the great David Forrest, the David Forrest show. I'm going to tell you right now, I went over to uh, our crack staff PR, our crack PR staff, I should say, and the great Mark Lang, and I said, he could be uh, one of our media darlings this year. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. J.D. Davis is good. R- Ross Stripling was really good, too. I, yes, yes, veteran guys, veteran guys. You know, you're talking about guys that have played in New York and Los Angeles. They've been in bigger markets. It's uh, It's fun to see. You know what? I would do extra time for Dallas, Braden. I would do, but you know what? We don't need Dallas. It's opening day. We don't need him. We got to go. We got to go. Oh, go. We got to go. We don't have time for you. Like not even two seconds? We don't have two seconds. I, I'm going to end the show. I will not talk to our – oh, there he is. Hi. What's up, Rilla? Tell me, how are we doing? Happy, happy opening day. I hope you kept the children out of school. I hope you kept everybody somewhere squarely planted in front of a television for today. This team is going to be better than people think. Yeah, you bet, I'm excited. You, you bet you're – yeah, give me a win total. Uh, I'm gonna tell. You, I got us. I got us easily a plus twelve to plus fifteen progression, which means I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little higher than that. You're a little higher than I'm that. I'm at seventy wins. Well, well, I mean, well, we won fifty last yeah. year, right? Plus twenty. Plus twenty. Okay. I believe this. I, I think the the fifty was so bad. These guys are so different than that. They are. So they, are. they probably should have been around sixty. Right? They would only be a ten game improvement. I think they win. I think they win seven. I can tell you this. I think the anticipation of the the level of competitiveness of the at bats that's something that I'm really anticipating. Something I I hope bears fruit because I think there's just a, a difference in approach and I think there's a certain level of graduation with certain guys in this lineup and I think that is going to be something that that kind of shows its face. And I think what we're going to get out of hopefully some of the veterans on the mound that we've been able to bring in some quality innings, just get us through those innings. Right. And that can help alleviate some pressure with guys down there in the bullpen. And I think everybody wins. Everybody starts to eat a little higher on the hog when that happens. And uh, you guys are making history tonight. We are. We are. I am not. My dear friend, Jenny Cap. You are a part of the history. Yes. I, I get a front row seat for one of the most historical moments that our game will ever experience. And I couldn't be happier. And it's so beyond that because your relationship growing up with her husband, the story is really crazy. It's, it, it's awesome. You know, uh, her, her, her husband, Steve, who's now a firefighter in Colorado where they live was a childhood friend of mine. One of my best friends growing up as a child, we played baseball together against each other from the time we were nine years old and then played on the same teams together, played against each other in high school, in junior college. So I've known Steve, like I said, since I was nine years old and our families have vacationed together. We've spent countless hours together. So it's it's a wonderful opportunity to get to go to work with a friend as opposed to going to work and making friends because that's awesome too. But to be able to kind of, Go to work with a buddy you've known for a while. Yeah. That makes things a lot easier. Uh, the other guy you're going to have here, it's going to be some work. It's going to be some work. He's a, he's a young fella. Just he's a young fella. A little rough around the edges. And, and I don't know that he, I don't know that he's had much guidance in his young career. And I hope that he's got somebody he can sort of lean on, somebody he could rely on, maybe somebody he could tap into for some advice. Because I think, and you and I both know yeah. how important it is to have somebody that you can lean on. Well, I had to do dinner with him in Scottsdale, and he talks a lot. So between the two of you, yeah, we, we better hope it's a five-hour game. <laughs> 
I'm going to learn to let it breathe. I hope, I hope he learns to breathe. You know, uh, you know what you mean to this fan base. It's great to have you leading the charge on television again. You know the fans love you, and I'm out of time. Well, I appreciate that, Tony. But uh, without you and the commander, I don't think the pulse gets out to the rest of the world. So you know how much you mean to them, you and the commander. Couldn't be happier. I couldn't be more excited for a hell of a 2024, my friend. Let's go. That's A's Cast Live. Coming up next, A's Total Access right here on A's Cast and the A's Radio Network. This is Chris Towns, and there are two things that are a must for me, comfort and style. Whether I'm playing golf, going to dinner, I've got to have the right feel. That's why I've partnered with Link Soul, and you're going to love Link Soul. They have just released their new spring line, new fabrics for their polos, lightweight and perfect for technical performance. Link Soul also has new styles for their layers and hoodies with cool prints and seasonal colors. You know what they say in the big leagues, look good, play good. Go to LinkSoul.com. That's LinkSoul.com. This is the place where you can dance like nobody's watching. Win like nobody's business. And get away like you mean. So what are you waiting for? Come join the party. Take that evening out and make it a night you'll never forget. This kind of action can't be beat. This has been a presentation of the Oakland Athletics.